Hi, it's Steve here again with another do-it-yourself video. This video is about how to repair your outboard bottom end. If you have a um, outboard that has stripped gears in the bottom end, or sorry, not stripped, but rounded clutch engagement dog teeth and uh, gear teeth. And the symptom for this outboard was it was uh, under idle or low throttle, like half throttle. Uh, everything was fine, it would move forward. Under full throttle and high torque, the uh, the forward gear would slip against the uh, clutch dog. So what I've got here, this is the propeller shaft out of the bottom end. The propeller goes on the end here, and this is the reverse gear, and this is the clutch dog, and this is the forward gear. And uh, so I pulled this cartridge out, and you know I priced them up, and to replace this gear uh, is the forward gear. It was like 250 bucks if you can get the gear because this is an old outboard. And when you replace this gear, you're supposed to replace this pinion gear, which is like 250 bucks, 300 bucks. And then if you're going to replace that, you should replace the reverse, although I probably wouldn't because this one's not... Yeah, I mean, how often do you use reverse? There's very little pressure on this gear with the new pinion gear. But anyway, so it basically it's about $1,000 $1, in parts by the time you get this guy, this guy, and this guy. Not to mention, if you change the gears you got to put pull the bearings off and press them onto the new gears that is not a big deal but these gear these uh, bearings are all shimmed between the bearing and the gear and uh, the bearing and the gear and I guess the reverse eh, I guess it might even be shimmed in there too and uh, so all of that is a real racket so instead of dropping a grand on it um, I thought well why don't I try and fix the teeth now I'll show you exactly normally normally this is how these gears go together and this only spins in one direction because it's connected to the crank of the engine. And these things are always engaged to that gear. So the forward gear and the reverse gear are always spinning. The difference is this clutch dog right here either engages the, sh the, the shaft to the reverse gear if it's like this, or the shaft to the forward gear if the clutch dog is like that. Um, let's see if I can get that to... There. Okay, so the problem was the clutch dog is made of super duper hard steel and its teeth right here were not rounded but the forward gear, its teeth were rounded. And you probably can't see it very well in this video but anyway, you got to trust me, they were rounded off. So, clutch teeth were good but where they engaged the forward gear, they were rounded. So that tells me that the clutch dog is made of harder steel than the uh, forward gear. This would have only happened um, if the the shift cable was improperly adjusted. If it was properly adjusted, the uh, the two teeth would have worn, you know, the teeth on the gear and the teeth on the clutch dog would have worn uniformly and there wouldn't have been a problem for a long, long time. But what happened, I believe, was the uh, shift cable was misadjusted, stretched or whatever, not checked. And uh, what happened was the clutch dog wasn't fully engaged with the forward gear teeth here and all the pressure was on the outer edge of the tooth and it rounded it off over time. So, that's the symptom. Here's what I did to, to fix it. Hopefully it's fixed. Uh, now these are uh, hardened steel gears and apparently it's only the surface of the gear that is hardened steel. So as soon as I started grinding metal away, I got, I'm told I, got into, I must have gotten into softer metal and doing this fix is not a you know, forever fix. But for a 20-year-old outboard that the alternative is spending a grand on, this is a pretty easy fix to try. You just have to be really careful and not in a hurry. So what I took is my uh, $19 uh, Dremel tool with an extension here, and I took a grinding disc, uh, a grinding like a car, uh, well, it's a grinding disc, and I made it. Uh, I made it. You can see it's tapered, right? So I ground it tapered, and that's so I could hold it and grind in there. Now I wanted to grind those teeth, back cut them, so they used to be they used to be uh, vertical and so were the clutch dog teeth. But I back cut them by about a degree, maybe half a degree or a degree, not much, and I back cut the clutch dog teeth about the same amount. So this way, when the forward gear engages with the clutch dog, they pull tighter together the more torque is on them. Um, and, and I think it's a better design and I'm surprised they don't come from the factory with some amount of uh, back cutting. Be very careful that you don't back cut them too much because what I'm told is if you back cut them too much 
and your idle is set too high in your upboard, you go to pull into a dock or your boat trailer and you can't get the thing out of gear into neutral. It just stays locked together. So you want to back cut them, I think, but just don't do it very, very much. Just do a little bit. So I have back cut both the forward gear and the clutch dog using a grinding wheel. Uh, always wear your safety glasses for sure. And don't put the grinding, uh, grinding uh, grinder on super high speed. Put it on the lowest setting because you definitely don't want to make a mistake and take too much off one of the outer surfaces of the teeth. What I would recommend is uh, only grind the base of the tooth. Don't grind the top where it's rounded off because it'll likely be rounded off uniformly. And if you grind only the base and you have a, you, you have a, you're very careful with the angle and you have the same angle on all three teeth, then you'll know pretty much how to uniformly grind them off. Now, what happens if you had, uh, how do you know that you have uniform uh, material taken away from each of the teeth? Well, there's probably some pretty fancy dial gauges and all that stuff. I'm not a machinist and I don't have that. And uh, I was very concerned, what if I had taken too much off of these two teeth and not enough off of that one? That would mean this one handles all the pressure and these two teeth just ride along and do nothing. Well, so what about that? Well, see that brass bushing on the inside? If one tooth or even two teeth are taking more pressure than the third tooth, that gear will have a tendency to twist on the shaft as it's under power. So it will twist under power like this and it'll wear your shaft or in this case it'll wear the brass bushing that's in there. So that's undesirable. So what do you do to fix that or to detect which tooth is ground lower? You take this stuff and this is called well, high spot blue made by Dykem, D-Y-K-E-M, and it detects high spots on bearings, gears, and other clothes fits. And what you do, it's uh, blue, it looks um, well, like ink, and uh, you should wear gloves because when you get on your fingers it doesn't want to come off. You dab it on uh, one of these teeth right here, and then you put it on and you rotate it against each of the three teeth on the clutch dog. And when you do that, you'll be able to see which of the clutch dogs you've ground too much. And then you clean it all off, and you put it on one of your clutch dog teeth, and you, you rotate it on each of these forward gear teeth, all three of them, and you can see which of these forward gear teeth you've, you've taken too much off of. So basically, you can't put the material back on, so you continue to grind your high spots until all three teeth on both gears evenly mesh together. Make sure everything is super duper clean. You don't want any miscellaneous grit from your grinding wheel to get in there, or anywhere like that. So what I do uh, is I, I use a high pressure uh, air compressor. Um, I say high pressure, it's about 155 PSI. And I blow the you know, blow compressed air on every one of these parts. And to clean out the bearing, which I did not pull off, because as I mentioned, that's a pain in the neck, I take the, uh, take the air compressor and I blow at an angle so it gently rotates this right here. I don't do it so that it spins very quickly because apparently that's extremely hard on a bearing to run dry like that, which makes sense. Um, so before anybody says, oh, that's bad practice, I only do it so that these balls or these uh, you know, little rolling pins roll very, very gently. And uh, I do that to make sure I get all the grit out. And you really want to do that. I would suggest putting this back together, running it for, say, 10 or 15 minutes. And after you pat yourself on the back from success, change your gear oil because there's probably bits of crud and maybe even metal filings. Those teeth will, will mesh to each other over time. And, uh, you know, you probably should change your gear oil first few times you've had this thing out. So this is how it goes in theory. I haven't put this back together yet, but in my comments, I hope to uh, let you know how it goes. Good luck with your project, and uh, I'm sure there are machinists around here that would say that uh, there's some better techniques, and there probably are. Uh, I'd love to hear it. I'm not a pro, and I'd love to hear advice from a pro. As with all my videos, I love to give back to the Internet community's information. And if you have comments um, and this video has helped you, or if you've tried this method with success, please, uh, please post a comment and, um, and let us know. 